بینندگان عزیز تلویزیون ملی ایران تا چند لحظه دیگه با رئیس کمیته خارجی پارلمان اروپا صحبتی خواهیم کرد با آقای بروک ولی اجازه بدید که در محل سخنرانی سازمان ملل هستیم همونطور که در پشت سر من می‌بینید در اینجا محلی است که در حدود 800 نفر میتونن بشینن صحبت کنن و همونطور که در دور ور داریم بتون نشون میدیم در بورس های مختلف در اتاق های مختلف به زبان های مختلف دنیا مترجمین نشستن در همون لحظه را ترجمه میکنن و اینها با گوشی ها میشنون به وسیله دوربین های مختلفی که در تر سراسر این اتاق هست گزارش مستقیم به دنیا داده میشه و گاهی وقتا این گزارش ها در همون لحظه به زبان همون من بکرد ترجمه میشه و میره اینجا مرکزی است که در آینده 700 نفر عضو خواهد داشت یعنی پارلمان اروپا به خاطر همین که میدونید کشورهای مختلف از روسیه جدا شدن عضو پارلمان اروپا هستن و اعضای بیشتری خواهند داشت ما میریم با دو نفر مصاحبه خواهیم داشت امروز در بلژیک در پارلمان اروپا یکی آقای بروک هست آقای بروک همونطور که گفتم نماینده بسیار مهمی هست که رئیس کمیته خارجه اتحادی اروپا و یک خانومی که این روزها بسیار بسیار برای ایرانی ها مقصد مهم هست و از کسانی هست که برای آزادی ایران و مردم ایران و دانشجوان و زن های ایران حمایت داره میکنه و خانم آمن هست که با اون هم مسابقه خواهیم کرد دارن ما رو صدا میکنن که بریم و راجب شما راجب این مسئله بیشتر با تون صحبت میکنم بریم خواهیش بود مسیر براک Thank you for your time. I know that you have a lot of things to do, and for timing you're giving to us is very important. Such a thing happen in the world, especially for the near future, and all the election goes around the world. In the United States, same thing, and Europe, same thing. And uh, we, would, we would like to talk about what's happening in the Middle East, especially in Iran. First of all, the terrorist act in the world is not the problem of one country. It's an international problem. And this international problem, all, all of us in every different country, we have, to, <clears throat> we have to come together to find out how we can survive and how we can make this world a better, better place to live. Uh, we heard a lot of the information that the Iranian government is working with the terrorists and doesn't care about the uh, future of the world. And recently, there is a lot of the complaint that Iranian, inside the Iran, they think that the European countries Uh, they are not focused on the on the this this problem. They are only economic for economy wise. They are supporting, or they don't stop the Iranian government. I want your idea. What you think about it, and uh, what is what what's your what's your future idea relationship European that you are neighbor of the Middle East, not like America Americans, and what will your plan for the future? You are very much right that uh, terrorism is an international question which needs an international answer. Uh, and therefore, I think uh, uh, the democratic community uh, has to work closely together. Iran is a very important country, a country with a very high culture and tradition. And uh, we hope that Iran will have a reform program which brings them back uh, to the country's uh, with such uh, values. Uh, but we have to see that the latest development is not uh, very positive uh, in the method how the elections were conducted uh, in Iran and also that there's a lot of difficulties uh, despite promises and negotiations uh, on the cooperation against terrorism, on the question of uh, nuclear power uh, and such questions and therefore Uh, we believe that uh, for the further positive development between the European Union and Iran, Iran has to take certain reform steps in such questions. I remember that that European especially really was very cooperative with the uh, uh, Iranian president and the people like Khatami that they think they tell, they tout all the world they tout. It's not I don't blame the European only that he is a hope for change in Iran. And we saw it when watching and we saw it, nothing happened. And still, uh, there are a lot of people in torture or in prison. What do you think that future that European with all part of the world, like America and Europe are together, comes to the, this point that they can push a little bit the Iranian government for, 
for free election, free referendum, that to see what, what the people want, really? I think that uh, the negotiations about an agreement between Iran and uh, European Union uh, must be seen under such conditions. If there's no certain progress with internal reforms, no better cooperation in certain questions like nuclear energy and other questions, I think we will not have such a result. And we had in the last years in Iran a situation that uh, we had uh, two uh, reigning systems in one state. And uh, the uh, situation around the last election has shown that the richest part has uh, much more power than the democratically elected part. And that therefore this reform process is not going on forward, that the promises could not be fulfilled, and uh, that since half a year we are very much afraid uh, that Iran will go again a uh, wrong direction. For your information, sir, in the Middle East, Iran has a special situation. You mentioned that culture-wise is a very rich country. But we see it, the Iranian people, especially young people, they are more than 60% of the uh, population, and they are under 30, 30 years. They believe that they are Muslim. They believe that they have a religion and believe it, but they don't want to be, to be like other, uh, other Muslim, like a fanatic Muslim. And they want to have a free uh, pre connection and relationship with all the world, with European, that they are the neighbors, and we have with long, long time, we had a good relationship with all the Europe, and American, and all the world. So, if, if the Iranian can come to the conclusion, and with your help, all the worse, that we are a very important part you have. You have a head of the foreign relationship and committee of the foreign relationship. So your uh, duty, I think, is very, very heavy in this part, and we hope that, uh, I am sure that you, you, you can do a lot about it. If we can ask the Iranian people, because as, as you see it now, we see the war in other country that, for example, America goes there for bring the democratic movement or something like that. In Iran, we, we don't need that. And in Iran, if, if even the people of Iran can go and vote what they want, they will choose something that I am sure will be for us very friendly and for future of Iran will be very, very important. And you think there is any hope that uh, Euro European government and uh, uh, nations can do something about it? I think it is very clear that uh, a really uh, uh, developed cooperation between Iran and European Union is only possible if there's a certain reform development within Iran. And it is very clarified by European Parliament, by the Council of Ministers of the European Union, and the Iranian government knows that. And the second point, as you pointed out, is the question of the young people. This country has many, many young people, very qualified young people. And these young people want to have their future. And they're not ready to accept the development which was in Iran in the last 25 years. And therefore, I believe that from this inf internal uh, pressure, a uh, reform process in, is inevitable. And uh, if uh, the mullahs want to uh, uh, stop uh, a possibility of a civil war, uh, I think they have to give in a re reform developments. Uh, you're completely right. I agree with you. And uh, recently, when we, because we are connected with uh, young young Iranian students, most of them, even the life is danger when they come out, and they know they will go to the. Uh, to the uh, to the prison again, but they're talking to us because they want. They said we we don't have anything else to, use, to lose. We want to do it for freedom, and we want to do it now. We don't want to wait to get old like you guys, like me. <laughs> but uh, we see it something that Iranian they're complaining about. Iranian young people, they see it to some of the governments, the people in governments, for example in Germany or other countries, because they have a business with Iranian government, and they have a lot of the money they put, for example, we know it, I don't want to bring it out now, in Kish Island, and they're talking positively about the government of Iran, and they they saying in face of the world that they are not, they, everything is okay, democracy is there. So the Iranian says, that has to be, because we think that you guys, you are a civil, civilized country. 
when we hear something from you guys that you're closing your eyes against us, and we, we, we disappointed. We see for, we, we want to be like them. But why they are not truthful? Why they don't help us to reach to the place that they are? What, do you have any, any answer for that? I'm, it's not you did it. I, I'm asking maybe the but wrong I think person. It's, it's a possibility that the constitutional situation in Iran is not understood by certain people. For sure, the last parliament was a democratic elected one. They made some very good decisions. Uh, but they were always stopped uh, by the Council of the Guardians, which has an oversight of the yeah. democratic process. And if the president and the parliament and the government cannot do what they want with majority, uh, because there's another side which has more power, Mr. Rafachani can control everything, uh, then I think uh, we have a situation, what we have now, that this reform movement has failed and that the young people in Iran are very unsatisfied because the promises could not be fulfilled. Do you have any messages for Iranian young people? I think uh, they should work uh, in courage uh, for their future, but they should be also have uh, enough calmness. Uh, the future is on their side. They will win the battle, and they should try to do it without a bloodshed. Thank you very much. I would like to, uh, on behalf of NITV, to give you something that we are Iranian proud of it. That's the first amendment that we had a long time ago, a long time ago for, from the, Cyrus the Great, as the first amendment for the human right. And in that day, it was for us, it's great because, you know, in that day, that nothing like that we had. Uh, he, without the bloodshed, but he, his army entered in Babylon, and he freed everybody. He gave the right to everybody to pray for his God. And even he gave the money to Jewish to go back, that was slave in Babylon, to go back to their country and build a country and pray for their God. And I, I would like to, you have it on behalf of us to uh, thank you for your time. And also I have the, the DVD that I hope that you have a heart to see it. And I know you know everything about it, but I want to see it. This is from Iran that we got it. And it's really, the people of the Europe and everybody has to know it. This is not in 21st century. We don't need that to take the eyes of someone and somebody that you're taking the eyes, calling God. And people that are taking their eyes out is people of the God. They call them to people of God. So something is here missing. Something is here is not correct. And I'm sorry to have to offer you to watch such a really harmful feeling uh, video and pictures, but I want you to share what's going through the Iranian people now and in our country. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks. interview with a very important woman that this stays in Europe and especially in Netherlands and European country Iranian people they talk about her very very highly this lady it is uh, in Dutch in Dutchland he is uh, from the Dutchland to the European uh, Parliament and a member of the European Parliament from uh, Netherlands and she is very, very uh, connected to the Iranian culture, Iranian freedom fighter, and uh, that's the reason that we are in Belgium, in Brussels, and we have a, in Brussels we have an interview, especially, and you give, her, give us a very, very good time in this, this time. We're going to have a nice, and trying to have a nice conversation, conversation. and she promised us 
to give us some more time in future. We'll come back to her and we're going to talk to her about her more with the Iranian people in, in Europe. And uh, let me introduce you to Ms. Oman. Mrs. Oman, thank you for your time. Thanks. Welcome. I heard from Iranian that they know you. They love you, they support you. Will you tell me why? Now, I know some, I have some Iranian friends. And um, my Iranian friends were refugees. They came to my country. And um, at that time, I was a member of the national parliament. And they asked me uh, to support them. What I did, um, we are now good friends. You are from CDP, am I right? Syria. Syria. Syria is stand for? That's the Christian Democratic Appeal. Christian Democratic Appeal. And it is a... It's not a religious party oh, okay. in the sense you have your religious <laughs> oh, you parties. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, it, um, uh, it's a party uh, which is on uh, the center, center, center right. Uh, we have an um, uh, uh, EPP, that's the European People's Party. The CDA is a member of the EPP and we are represented in the European Parliament as Christian Democrats. It's uh, the largest uh, party. We have um, most of the seats in the European Parliament and we work closely together with all the other Christian Democratic parties in uh, uh, Europe. Thank you. Let's go to the main questions. Uh, Iranians, they are worried about the, sometime the European government, they taking the side of the Iranian government. And uh, especially young people, they think that we are, we are fighting for a future that be civilized countries and a free country like Europe, like America. When we see we when we see the European, some of the European government, they don't do it the way that they have to do. We believed on them, is disappointed for us. What do you think about this? Uh, let me say this: um, we have the European Commission, and the European Commission is responsible for the relations with uh, the whole world. Then we have the European Council. The European Council is the representation of all the ministers and prime ministers of the European uh, countries, yeah? of the European member states, I have to say. Okay. Um, then there is a European Parliament. Uh, European Parliament is directly elected by the European citizens. So, if the European Commission comes up with something like trade negotiations, then it is the European Parliament who plays a decisive role in this process. And we as a European Parliament, but also now the European Commission and the European Council are completely worried of what was happening in your country. It looked for some of the member states like a kind of a liberalization in the last years, because I have so many good Iranian friends, I know that it wasn't really uh, liberalization, it wasn't as free as it looked from outside. But then, in this year, in 2004, your elections came up, then we had to see and we had to conclude that the election was not free and fair. Why? If not everybody can stand for an election, if uh, candidates are imposed, then you must conclude in your country on democracy has still uh, many things to be cleared before a real um, uh, negotiation on a trade, uh, on trade, can be concluded. And Parliament said in a resolution that because of the fact that your election was not free and fair, one of the reasons, we 
can't have a normal relation with Iran. And that is accepted by the European Commission and that's also accepted by the European Council. There is a sometime in some governments, like a, for example, let me tell you that information that we have it and we're going to bring it up with a picture and fact. For example, in Germany, that some of the governments, that high class, uh, high rank uh, governments uh, officers, uh, because they have a lot of the money they, they uh, invested in Iran, uh, they, they taking the personal uh, side on it for their capital. And this will be in the future of a relationship of free Iran and Europe will be affected because you know the people will try, will will not thinking about the one person. When someone on behalf of one government talk or do, does something, Iranian people they think the people they did it. No, you must you must know huh, that if a member state, if Germany or France or uh, the British, if they want to do something with Iran, they can do it at their own. But then only in a bilateral relationship. But if a European relationship is involved, and you know that your, I know that your government wants that, then it's the parliament who has to decide. It's the parliament who has to say a yes or a no. And the actual position of this parliament is that because of the fact that the elections were not free and fair, because of um, the fact that human rights are still not as they should be, uh, because of the fact that the nuclear program is uh, still not uh, left, the answers we were asking for don't satisfy, because of the, the, those three facts, uh, there can't be a Europe, European cooperation with Iran. There is another point I have to tell you. There is a committee, a delegation uh, from Iranians and members of the European Parliament. We work closely together. But we can't install this committee as long as the problems in your country aren't solved. So trust the European Parliament, trust uh, representatives of the largest group in this Parliament, uh, keep us informed so that we can uh, empower our governments that we can empower the European Commission to be active in um, pushing a more democratic system, system in your country. So, really the simple question is this, that Parliament, you are a member of Parliament, yeah. in the uh, European Parliament. European Parliament, you can override or you can question the other committee or not? No. For a trade agreement, mm -hmm. uh, Parliament has to say yes or no. So your your role is very important, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. And do you think that the the others, how many how many members you have? Uh, we have now, we had now with the 15 mem member states, we have now 625, me 626 members. And may I and ask you this? In the, with the, with the 10 uh, after the. 10th of June elections, we will have more than 700. 700? Yeah, we will have more than, ha we'll have more than 700 members in the European Parliament. And um, for a uh, European agreement with your country, the Parliament has to vote in majority with a yes. If the vote is a no, there won't be an agreement. That's it. There is something else. I just told you about the committee uh, which has relations or which had relations with Iran. After the 10th of June, we will see if we uh, can or if we will renew that delegation. Because 
in a democratic Europe. In a Europe that uh, wants to support democratically elected uh, representatives. We can't have contacts with those who are not elected in such a democratic form. So that's the reason that there is now a standstill in all the relations from Europe with your country. How many percent of the members of the uh, uh, European uh, Parliament thinks like you? Or they are thinking uh, you, you the way that you're thinking? You just spoke to one of my very important colleagues, Mr. Elmar Brock, and he is the leader of the Foreign Affairs uh, Committee. He's also a member of my group. And um, as you know, and as he told you, he, um, uh, he has this, the same view as I am presenting to you. So that means, first of all, install a democratic system. Install really not only in the legislation, but really in uh, the hearts of the people the human rights and try to empower the citizens that they can overcome their daily problems because they are now suffering, suffering, suffering in a sense that the regime needs the money for uh, their own interest. It's not the Iranian citizen who is important, but it's the system which is important. And if the Iranians want to have a serious and a very good relationship with Europe, then they have to change that first. As you it's say, at the their system side. Has to change, don't you? It's at yes, the system has to change. The system is not the government. The government is the system. All right. Yeah. So, uh, what what in here conflict? It's happened, and the people of Iran is uh, want to make it clear that first things they wanted to have an election that they choose what kind of government they want because they don't believe because they said we trusted we supported for example uh, Mr. Khatami and he promised that he's going to change we saw it, that the outcome was same so we want to choose the kind of the government we want we don't want a government that uh, interfere we want uh, in, in the religion we want the government that talks for the people not brings the god in uh, name and uh, name of the God, they do whatever they want. So, is it uh, your people and you or, or others, colleague, they are thinking to give a right to Iranian people the first choose the kind of government they want? Yeah, that, that's the reason. Eh? We have this. There's only um, one possibility for the Europeans to do something in your country. And that is to block trade negotiations. That's the, only, that's the only power we have. And by blocking that, your regime, your government... Not my government. No. no. Uh, by, by blocking that, the Iranian, <laughs> by blocking that the Iranian government uh, has to see that Europe is serious in pushing a new kind of democratically elected representative or house uh, democratic government who really cares for the Iranian citizens. So I can't, I can't uh, come to Iran to, uh, to be elected there. That's true. It has to come from inside. That's true. I know that there are many citizens who want to empower others to go for democracy. We can support that groups, but in a sense, the Iranians have to do it themselves. And we can only help them. And how can we help them? By blocking the wishes of the Iranian system. 
by blocking the wishes of the Iranian government. That's it. All right. <clears throat> There's something that we are uh, really scared. We know the Iranian government is very tricky. They lie. They play the games. And in Iran, they're talking that the Iranian government is buying time to play a game for atomic, for atomic bomb and what they're craving there. So you think that this negotiation or blocking trading that it doesn't work completely because you know the, some of the some of the countries for their problem, economic problem, they don't listen. They selling the they things to the Iranian they need. They're getting more money. Do you think? that is not dangerous and it doesn't give them the time to do it if they play the game. How long the European Parliament will give the time to the Iranian government for answers? Uh, there is, the whole negotiations have come to a standstill now. After the events happened in, uh, at your elections, everything came to a standstill. So if they want to be uh, a partner uh, from Europe, a partner from the US, uh, then they have to give their answers. We can't force them. We can't go in war no. with Iran. No, we cannot. No, we can't. And we want we don't want that. No. We want don't Nobody want no, we don't want to be involved in that way. No. So the pressure must come from inside, but we can support those inside groups. How? Those citizens groups. How? Because you know they're killing the people, and now in the, you know what, uh, and we have here the tape for you, the, the, the DVD that you can see at the how they taking the people's yeah. eyes out, and uh, they're killing the people and the students still they yeah. are in jail, and nobody can go to the street. And for 18 of tier that's coming in the 40 days, they're they are pushing the Iranian students, and uh, how you said the help. How the outside they can help them because there is no money for them. Everything that goes in Iran goes to the government. And the student front, they cannot have a budget, they cannot have anything. They don't have even, uh, they have a problem for even the computer. But we, we know it, not only the Europe. We know that some American company that's selling the things, but not directly to Iran, goes through the, through the Arab Emirat uh, in Arab countries, then goes to Turkey, then goes to Iraq, then goes to Iran but finally goes to the hand of the government. Yeah. So will you tell me how you can help? I know that support, the, if you block the money, yes. Yeah. But uh, how the Iranian people, if the Iranian people, let's say, come to the street and uh, the government start to shoot them, this is a responsibility of the free world to come and help, not by army or something, but something has to happen. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Something has to happen. It means that by giving support to everybody who uh, wants to fight uh, for democracy. The citizens from Iran, they only can uh, throw out this regime. We saw that in the former communist countries. We saw that they were liberalized, not by uh, having European help, but by having support from politicians, from the European member states, by having support from NGOs to install a new democracy and that's what should happen and what European what the European Union has to do is that they can't give a more comfortable position to the regime by uh, giving them all the means by giving them the finances if you have to do something you have to do it directly to the citizens and that's that is what counts is not the oil that scares European that if they don't get the oil, free oil or cheap oil, no. there's, there's no any way because I see it that other countries like Saudi Arabia or other countries can give you the oil. Why, 
by all of the countries. There, there, in there Europe. was there was a big conference last uh, last week in uh, in Amsterdam on uh, on oil. Let's say this that uh, the Europeans uh, don't want to be yeah the, the Europeans don't want to be blackmailed by some oil. So that's good. That's good news, but. I think we are in a different position. We are different from the Americans, I think. So American, they think differently. What they think? On some so dossiers, yes. <laughs> On so some dossiers, yes. Let's go to this portion. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's American thinks that you don't like it? No, 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 no. no that's not the case. Yeah. I think that, that uh, the involvement of the Europeans in the oil dossier is less than the involvement of the Americans in the oil dossier. Uh, because the most... Uh, biggest oil company, they are Americans, yeah. isn't it? So we are not going to uh, say it, no. Uh, um, we have the same problem in the yeah. world. Because, you know, I see it. No, but human rights, huh? If you want, if you want the um, positive developments in a country, mm -hmm. then you have to support the human rights. That's, that's a very important thing. Absolutely. That, that's the only thing. If you want to, to, to uh, free uh, the Africans, for example, from their uh, poverty, then you have to support their human rights, because that's the only that is the only mean to to uh, to, re to reach your goals in a country, and that has to be done also in uh, Iran. We have to empower, we have to support, also as politicians, those citizens those NGOs which are uh, fighting for democracy, fighting for human rights, uh, fighting for uh, or fighting against crime, against torture. Iranian problem is not the Iranian problem. Iranian problem is the future of the world problem. We see it differently. Because Iranian is not now Iranian government is not only inside problem because the, they are creating and developing not now it's from 20 years ago, 16 years ago they're developing in different parts of the world same problem that they created in Iran fanatism against the free world destroying their civilization yep. and this if if the free world and civilization doesn't stop it. And it doesn't mean, I don't, I, I'll have to correct myself that, it doesn't mean it has to destroy the religion. Islam religion has no. to be just religion and free religion and peaceful religion. If there is some people that in name of any religion, they are going to be the terrorist act, involved in the terrorist act or destroying the civilization and f take the freedom of the free, free world, all the words they have to take it seriously and they have to stop it. And we think in the future, if it doesn't, we don't do it now. In the future, regardless that you are Iranian or not, in any part of the world you will be suffering, and we will be suffering, even if we are looking, we are we are living in Los Angeles, will be the same thing. As you know, the last week from last week, we have informed that Los Angeles is the next city they're going to attack by the uh, terrorism. So, uh, I think that you you all Iranian around the world, and especially you people from your country. They have to understand that the people like you can help their country, not only Iran and the world, their country, because you're working for your country. But the way you're thinking is the future of that people, and I'm appreciating of that. Yeah. But you never ever, you never ever can misuse the name, for, the name of God or the name of Allah to do something in a country. Don't do that. I'm a Christian Democrat, and the Christian Democrat means that I have uh, Christian principles, Christian principles, how to behave with others. So never use religion to uh, to uh, suppress the citizens, because that's not meant by a religion. That's not meant by God or Allah, then uh, they uh, taught us 
how to live. And the regime is misusing the religion to suppress your citizens. And we as Europeans, we are also religious. We have to tell your NGOs, your members of parliament, your government officials, that Iran can only survive, the Iranian citizens can only overcome their problems if they are willing to install an absolute democratic system in your country. Let me ask you the last question, or before last. I'm, I'm, I'm start to cheating. I'm going to have more time. You are a woman. Yeah. And I'm sure, because you're an Iranian friend, you have information about what's happening with the woman in Iran. Absolutely. What do you feel? Uh, that's that my sisters, because they are my sisters, that my sisters uh, are not equal, that they don't have equal rights for European women, that's very difficult. And if I can do something for them, I'll do it. Uh, we have heard that in your parliament, in, in your country, there is an uh, Iranian lady. Uh, we were shocked that the Iranian lady, that she has a very good negotiation and religion, uh, relationship with the Iranian government and doesn't really come up like, a, like someone, like a Dutch woman and pretending that still he's supporting sometime. She's supporting sometime the Iranian government, not the, the, his government that he's working for it. And when the people of the world like you, we try to understand Iranian people, Iranian women, it's too late. They are not going to go back to 1400 years ago. They cannot, they yeah. didn't. Yeah. They tried everything, they couldn't stop them. But helping the women of the world yeah. to the, I think, the powerful Iranian woman that they are, yeah. culturally, family Educated, wise, educated. And if the women of the world, they support the Iranian woman, it will be very, very uh, positive way for the things that you said, because when you are a woman, you are a mother, you are a sister, or you are a wife, or you are a girlfriend. This three or four, is most powerful that always can say to the man what to do and what to don't. So if you support the woman of your world, I think the movement that it is already by students will be more faster and more stronger. There is any way that any hope that you, because I, I see you that how positively you taking your act, there is any way that we to help the Iranian woman in your country or in the Europe we make such things, such a movement in the future? Or oh, I'm absolutely willing to support where I can because seeing suffering so many Iranian citizens, suffering so many uh, Iranian women, uh, we should stop that. And I'm willing to work at it. Do your at most um, in education, do your utmost for your own education and stay with your families, your brothers and sisters. You must see that if you stand together, you can solve the problems in your country. And I will promise my help, I can tell you that with the help of the EPP, the People's Party Group in uh, the European Union, we can solve everything what you are suffering for. Thank you very much. I hope that you have this on your office. 
I don't understand it. We were the first people in the world that we had a human right. Yeah. And we are not going to give it up after 2,500 years. We cannot. This is a, the king of Iran, Cyrus the Great, who says, I'm a Cyrus. And he is a king of the Babylon, king of the Sumer, king of the Akkad, king of the four countries. And when he, in that time, 2,500 years ago, when we, with the, one of the biggest army in the world, without the killing someone, they took over. They give the right of the free religion, and they give the, even the money to the Jewish to go and build their, their, uh, their faith centers. And now we ended after 2,500 years yeah. with the people of the God, they're destroying and they're ignoring the right of the human that we gave it to the world first time in the world. I hope that you accept it from us in your office. That's the only thing we can do for you. But Don't keep in us. mind, eh? keep always in mind eh? that it, there are very good examples in the world where the systems were chased away. And that's what we want to do for your country. We want that every citizen in your country will have the rights they should have. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks.